We'll call this meeting of the Silver City Town Council to order. Please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Christina. That went better than the Star Spangled Banner at the Super Bowl. I was going to say, here. like Christina Aguilar. Did you want me to sing the national anthem? Correctly? No. Okay. The mission statement of the town of Silver City. Silver City is the hub of an inclusive community settled within a small town that through guided growth honors and preserves its historical, cultural, and natural heritage while facilitating jobs, health, and education resources such that the residents and visitors may enjoy and protect the recreational opportunities of the area and high quality of life. And nobody signed up for public input. Council comments. Councilor Bettison, would you like to start? Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just wanted to let everybody know that on behalf of the mayor in the town of Silver City, I did attend um, the PRC hearing that was done on the PNM rate case in Albuquerque, which was last January 26th, and um, did read a statement on behalf of the mayor in the town that uh, the mayor uh, wrote. And, and it was brilliant. She <laughs> just <he> wrote it. <laughs> On January 27th, uh, I attended the Prospector's Legislative Day in Santa Fe. Um, the mayor was there too, and I'm sure he'll talk about that. It was interesting. Uh, we had a different procedure. We met with uh, many of the lawmakers, which was really good for us. And on February 3rd, I, along with how many? 40 people, maybe? 35 to 40 people, some of which are in this room. Uh, in the negative whatever degrees it was outside, we collected at the downtown arch for the main street uh, singing of the last sentence of downtown for their video. And all I can say is it was pretty cold and we must have taken about 15 different takes on huh, Councillor Thompson. Good group though. You're not going to recognize anybody in there though because we're all bundled up. <laughs> No one really knew who anybody was because they were all bundled up. It was really cold. But that's it for now. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Thompson. Um, still working on the animal ordinance. Uh, I'd like to hear from folks, especially, at, I haven't heard from uh, any of the small breeders, so I'd like to hear from those guys. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Councillor Whedon Smith. Nothing to say. You sure? Really? Yeah. Well, hey, we always get a second ground. So. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Morales. Uh, no comments. Thanks. Round two. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to welcome the, the Western students that are here this evening. They have part of their class's assignment is to attend a town council or a county commission meeting. And I'm sorry that it had to be this one that there's just not a whole lot of policy discussion but we had a little visit before and I'll stay after and see if I can help you out any um, still accepting input from on the essential air service we have till I think the 22nd to put in our decision on essential air service provider and of note on that is Senator John McCain out of Arizona has submitted a bill in the federal legislature to eliminate that entire program. So if you have the urge, give him a give him a call, give our Congress people a call, and if you feel like supporting the program, let them know that. The Councillor Bettison mentioned the PNM. We do have an agreement that has been proposed and then filed with the PRC. Is it even is it public now that it's filed? Yes. So you you've probably seen some stories in the press about it, but I have a, a brief on it. Looks like 
we will get a rate increase that's drastically less than what it was. We also got several conditions that we had requested and, and rate structures are in the agreement. So I think overall we did very well and this was truly a team effort with a large team and from our our town attorney, Mr. Scavron, who I can proudly say of all the creative ideas that we had in dealing with this, they came from him. And Councilor Bettison, who's attended many meetings that, that I couldn't, the town attorney from Alamogordo, the mayor of Alamogordo, um, Mr. Rennick is another attorney that worked with us out of Santa Fe, and I think all of us working together in the coalition, which was pretty much the the four municipalities in Grant County, the County of Grant, Lordsburg, Otero County, Alamogordo, and Riedoso. So we had quite a coalition to to support and work for our citizens in in the P and M rate issue. And I think we've we've come to probably not the best that we would all want, which would probably be a zero increase, but a good consensus on where we where we can go from here. The prospectors meeting in Santa Fe was was quite interesting. We met with Senator John Arthur Smith, who's the chair of the Senate Finance Committee. We met with Senator Tim Jennings, who is the president pro tem of the Senate. We met with our local representatives, um, Representative Martinez and Senator Morales. We met with the Lieutenant Governor and pretty much all of them said that the hold harmless is is on the table but is not in as critical jeopardy as we had once thought it might be. But it's not off the table. Um, I understand there will be a bill introduced before the 17th that would eliminate the hold harmless over 15 years. And we don't know what what the phase out of that would be until the bill drops. There's, there's tons and tons of bills out there. And once again, as I did the last meeting, I'll encourage you to go to the New Mexico legislative <coughs> website. You can search by sponsor if you want to see what, what our locals are doing or anyone in particular. You can search by subject, and there's subjects from healthcare to bicycles that Jamie's really interested in. Um, there's anything from mining to taxes to multiple bills on reorganizing the state government, and some of those are quite interesting to, to look at. You can also see where where they're at, what they're doing, if they're moving through the the process at all, you'll see that they've been in a committee and whether they were passed. If they receive a due pass, then they move to the next committee. If they don't, then they pretty well die right there. And if they're tabled, they're either dead right there or they are waiting for amendments and some sort of consensus by the parties, the stakeholders in, in that bill. So I encourage all of you to be active in that. I know our representatives and senator want to hear from you and give them input on what's what's important to you. And as I said before, at the end, I will give a, a wrap up, which won't be till about the middle of March. Any, that's it. Anybody? Nobody. We'll move on. Yes. I. I my suggest that you uh, tell people what the consequence of McCain's bill to eliminate the EAS program. Uh, if there is no EAS program, if we have any air service at all, it's likely to be from a particular carrier with uh, one non-pressurized plane, and the round trip to Albuquerque will probably be in excess of $600. <coughs> And, and that's actually coming from from history that that's what was offered in Clovis, from Clovis to Albuquerque. And they had spoke of offering that. 
that same deal that never actually did it from Grant <coughs> County to Albuquerque. So what we have now is an average of two hundred. Eighty-five dollars, seventy-five dollars, something like that, is an average one-way fare, which would go up to about three hundred for one way, which essentially eliminates most people from from using the air service to get to other parts of the world and do business in our, our this state's business center, Santa Fe and Albuquerque. Thank you. Are there any changes to the agenda? Hearing none, approval of minutes of the special meeting January 24th, 2011. Mr. Mayor. Councilor. I move that we approve the minutes of the special meeting of January 24th, 2011. I second it. There's a motion and a second to approve. Is there any discussion? There's a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the special meeting January 24th, 2011. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item is approval of minutes of the regular meeting January 25th, 2011. Mr. Mayor. Council Bissell. I move that we uh, approve the minutes of the regular meeting of January 25th, 2011 as presented. Mr. Mayor, I second that motion. There's a motion and a second to approve. Is there any discussion? There's a motion, a second, and no further discussion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting January 25th, 2011. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is reports. Anne, would you like to give a report? Yes, I'd like to um, mention that absentee and early voting is happening at City Hall. Early voting actually starts tomorrow. We'll have our vote tabulator machine in operation so they can cast the ballot through their vote machine. And um, this absentee early voting period lasts until February 25th. Our election is March 1st for counselor in District 1 and counselor in District 3. And I think that's about it. Thank you. Chief? Anybody have any questions for the chief reference the wrap up that he gave handed out last meeting? Do you? No. Thank you. I have actually have one question. Um, I was going to do it myself, but um, do we know how many crashes there are at the Walmart and Deming to Supercenter to speak up a little bit? Um, I was just curious. I saw that there were a bunch of crashes at, at the Walmart here. And uh, I was just for comparative purposes. Do we have any idea how many there are in Deming? It's roughly the same size, same area. Um, <clears throat> I don't have an exact figure, but uh, according to the chief, when I talked to him about the issue previously, it probably been about a year, year and a half. Uh, they have a a higher uh, private property crash rate at that Walmart as well. Really. There was one thing that Alex was going to bring up. He was going to point out that the rate of accidents on 180 has gone up significantly since the 180 project done by the state. Is that attributed to design or? Well, if you take a look at the, the information that I provided, um, <clears throat> Possibly. I'm not going to say yes uh, to that question. It's always possible because of the, the uh, location of those traffic lights being so close together, and that creates a situation. But if you take a look at the trend from 2006 all the way through 2008 that I was able to obtain from the uh, New Mexico uh, Traffic Safety Bureau, uh, the number one uh, cause factor for traffic crashes in Silver City uh, was either first or second was driver inattention. So you have an issue where people are doing something that they're not supposed to be doing while they're operating a motor vehicle, either looking around adjusting radio, we have a rearing collision, or they're not paying attention to the lights. That generally the uh, 
cause for those. Uh, I don't have the stats right now. Um, Captain Terry Fortenberry is looking into and pulling the reports on the cause factors for those 26 uh, crashes uh, to determine what what actually was the issue there at those intersections. I should have that report fairly quick, but again, that's a handicap. We want to determine. We also took a look at possibly um, hiring a engineering firm to uh, take a look at that that section of roadway again, but that's going to be very cost prohibitive in doing that. Uh, we want to take every avenue. Clearly, we have an issue out there. Enforcement is not the only way of dealing with it. Uh, we we want to look at every avenue on this thing. Council. One other, uh, I'm sorry, if you don't mind. One other, as a uh, brainstorming and looking, uh, it may be at some point in time we look at uh, red light cameras. Uh, but again, there's a cost to that, and it, it's something that the city council would have to decide on. But that's always an option because. Any one of you can sit out there in an hour and probably see four or five individuals run those red lights out there. One of the things that we asked the state to do was red ball those intersections, which means for one second the entire intersection uh, was red or is red uh, to try and cut down on those type of accidents. We're still having accidents out in that area. Uh, our fatality happened out at the 32nd bypass and um, uh, 180 East. Contributing factors on that was a uh, failure yield right away and also appears to be some speed issues as well. So that's why we spend a lot of time out there enforcing traffic. Again, not only do we spend time out there enforcing traffic, but also the state police spends um, Quite a bit of time in that area as well. County, not so much, but they do, they are active on occasion in the area. So we have a lot of enforcement, so the enforcement is not the only issue here with these intersections. Um, Chief, I just wanted to say that that's one of, 180 was one of the things that was brought up um, at the prospectors meeting with the acting uh, secretary of the transportation department. And one of the things I said is it was my perception that the lights out there turn red much faster than the lights in town. You know, that there's a perception, and it could be because of the proximity, but that they seem to be almost on-demand lights where a car will come up from, you know, uh, the off streets, and then all of a sudden the light turns like that. And that when you're going even at... 35 that that can cause a problem with people either abruptly stopping or running what's now through a red light so they did say that they would go back and look at that someone else mentioned that the lights they didn't believe were timed you know to all at the same time so they said that they would go back and look at that and I think I believe you were you were there what you went there. Okay. And there, there was also, um, it was brought up, I think, that uh, they said they were going to come back and work on the bike lanes at some point. That, because they've heard that people are concerned about the bike lanes. So, but there's no uh, dates for any of those. But. Right. In, in our looking at those intersections, the traffic lights, uh, the, the change, Mm -hmm. seems to be normal throughout the city, depending on the size of the intersection. Some of them may have a longer yellow, uh, depending on that size of the intersection. Yes. An example of that is the Ranch Club Road in Memory Lane. Uh, that probably has a one or two second longer uh, yellow than any other because of the size. They do it by size of the intersection and also the speed. Uh, unfortunately, we write a lot of speeding citations out there. People just haven't gotten the, uh, that it's a 35 mile an hour zone, pure and simple. And uh, when it changes yellow, you either proceed with caution or you stop. We still have that issue in this town 
and we've been doing the enforcement for how long? So again, it's, it's driver inattention. Um, if they're not paying attention to the light, they see it yellow, uh, they're looking down doing something, obviously they're going to run that, that red light and create a uh, safety issue. So again, there may be an issue of going back and asking the state to redesign those side roads so that we don't have so many traffic lights out there and it comes in on frontage roads into one intersection. Um, that, the original design, that's what it was, and that appeared that that was going to uh, create a safer environment. Currently, it's not safe out there. Just, just to comment, I guess, you know, when you said that um, some of our intersections have a longer yellow, you know, by a second, I think that's what I mean by the perception that they go very quickly from green to red. And you've explained it now, it's the size of the, inter the intersection and the speed, but the, these are very small intersections with only these side, you know, roads coming in. And, I mean, I myself have come down under speed limit and find myself, you know, it's green as I approach the line and boom, it's yellow and it's red. And there's no way to stop without people hitting me in the back. I mean... So it's good that there's a red ball where there's at least that delay. I mean, it's not that there's an intention to do that, but it, once again, I think it's the what you might have mentioned already, which is the proximity of these lights to each other. I mean, that's that's part of it. There's quite a few in there. Right. Do we have any grants that cover that area for saturation patrols to reduce crashes? Um. <clears throat> Yes, we do. And through the next quarters, when we're breaking this down into quarters, we're going to do some impact uh, enforcement, looking for specific violations on it. So throughout the next six months to eight months, that's what we're going to do is we're just going to put people into the air and we're going to hit it. But again, we also want to take a look at, at the cause factors uh, last year we had the same issue with some of these intersections in 2009 as in 2010. So clearly there's a pattern of safety in this area the, the, because of the speed, because of the proximity of the, the traffic lights, because of the, the basic setup. It's creating more work for us. and. <clears throat> I, I've given the city council the information as to what, what the actual cost is per crash in the documents that are provided. Uh, theoretically, through the National uh, Highway Institute, that one fatality uh, theoretically costs $1.2 million for everybody involved, including the city, insurance, etc. So it, it, it's imperative that we not only do the enforcement, but we also look at the, the engineering aspects of this and also the cause factors. If we need to uh, take a step and you know, look at further legislation to prohibit certain activities while operating a motor vehicle, so be it. Uh, we're going to come back and, you know, and hopefully provide a, a compre comprehensive um, information to the city council based on what our study is. Yeah, I, I think it would be interesting to to pursue this discussion further. Obviously, we all watch the news. The red light camera question was bound to come up at some point. You were. Thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> it's it's something we'll we'll have to decide and look at the studies and see how we interpret them and how they would actually benefit certain intersections. And as well, they're on they're on a state highway. Um, just as a quick side note, um, I'm not advocating um, red light cameras. But at some point in time, it might be prudent to at least test one, see how it works. Uh, the latest study shows you know, it's not down uh, crashes and intersection uh, up north. Uh, so 
but I mean, it might be a viable avenue later on. But I think our problem is going to be that the state said you can't put them on a state highway, and they they pulled them out of Albuquerque when they were on. It's just a street in Albuquerque, but it's actually designated as a highway, and they pulled the cameras. So we may have our hands tied on that, which would save me a lot of headache in making that decision. But uh, Marin, I, I don't mean to be blunt. Uh, sometimes I'm that way, but uh, for public safety purposes, the state is going to have to buy into accomplishing something in this area to knock down our number of accidents. Those accidents, if you also noticed, uh, we had an increase in the in number of crashes involving injuries. Um, and, and the faster people go, the worse the crash, the more injuries we have. So it's prudent with, for the state of New Mexico, the highway transportation, to address this issue with our jurisdiction. Just a quick question. The state um, highway department is the one who sets the speed limit, correct? Correct. I'm just wondering, there's, not, there's really no way to get up to speed between two of those lights up to 35 before you hit the next one. Yes, it is. So I'm just wondering if that... In of itself, I know that you know another reduction in speed, just because of the proximity of the lights to each other. Because um, I noticed they change the speeds as you go out of town. You know, the 35, the 45, then it goes to 55, which is not the way it used to be. Right. Um, <clears throat> in, in specific locations, we don't have speeding. Example. Let me <laughs> qualify that. We have speeding, but it's less than uh, other areas. The example being between the lights uh, at the Shreveport Mackin Rand and over to Rosedale Road. Uh, that area is Rosedale Road and 180, right there by Walgreens. That's a short distance, so we tend not to have the, the excess of speed in that area. Where we, where we generally have the increase in speed is going up through out here in front, all the way through the intersection of Memory Lane, uh, down the hill to that first light, and then as they increase going up to Walmart and over the hill on them. The lights are not synchronized. You know, pure and simple, the lights are not synchronized. But I understand why they didn't synchronize the lights. We don't have the side traffic um, that other locations do. If we had frontage roads that, that led up to a specific light, it would be much easier to have that, that done, synchronization. I don't want to be sitting at an intersection for three minutes waiting for the synchronization to kick through. But if there's nobody at the next intersection, say uh, Rosedale Road, why would we want that one to change with everything else and impede the flow of traffic? So I understand why they did what they did, but they're not synchronized, pure and simple. This is kind of brainstorming session that we're having because there's really nothing on the agenda of great importance. But, sorry, Ann. There's, I think what I would expect is to, to get a recommendation from you that we can then carry to the State Highway Department and go back and look and actually have the professionals that, that Thank you. design highways give us a report and give us recommendations and hopefully it's their highway they would fund the repairs. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. No other reports? <coughs> First item on the agenda is approval disapproval of request for destruction of records from the following departments executive, finance and accounts payable, finance, utility, billing, municipal court, police and recreation center, public works, quantity 57 boxes. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm requesting your approval, the council's approval of the destruction of the 57 boxes from those departments that you mentioned. Uh, each record custodian from those departments has reviewed the records carefully and determined that they've met the records retention schedule per the state. I've rechecked it and the state, I sent it to the state and they've also approved it. So we need your approval in order to go forward and 
I'll um, call up our bonded vendor to come pick up the records and do the shredding for us. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, I move to approve the destruction of records from the following departments, executive, finance, accounts payable, finance, utility billing, municipal, police, recreation center, public works for a total of 57 boxes. Mr. Mayor, I second the motion stated. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? There's a motion and a second. No further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is approval disapproval of the rescheduling or cancellation of the regular town council meeting scheduled for February 22nd, 2011. And we need to reschedule for the 21st, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So do I put that in the motion? Is there any discussion? Anybody? I think we've all worked out any issues, right? 3.30 p.m. 3.30. 3.30 p.m. So that is what the motion is? Make a, the motion would be to reschedule the meeting for the 21st okay. at 3.30 in this location. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the rescheduling of the regular town council meeting scheduled for February 22nd, 2011 to Monday, February 21st at 3.30 p.m. here in the Grant County Commission Commissioner's Meeting Room. And I second the motion as stated. There's a motion and a second to reschedule February 21st. Is there any discussion? No, no. discussion at all. This is really getting boring. <laughs> There's a motion and a second to reschedule the regular council meeting from February 22nd, 2011 to February 21st, 2011 at 3.30 p.m. in this room. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to adjourn. Mr. Mayor, I second the motion stated. There's a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned.